Now, I have several patients who know I mean, what they should do. They know about low carb, they know about fasting, they know about exercise. But the most difficult part for them is execution and implementation. So we are in the sin city of the world, the mecca of dopamine arousal. So I thought I would talk about the pleasure centers today and see how I can try to help my patients and myself. The story starts with uh, James Olds and Peter Milner, and they were investigating, investigating a rat in whom they had put in an electrode in, deep into their brain. And what they noticed is that the rat would want to go to that green grid so that it could get electrically shocked. And if they would move the grid a little bit to the left of the rat, the rat would pretty soon follow. And over time, you could train the rat and move it like a joystick. So what they had done, and although they did not know it, is that they had put the electrode deep into the rat's brain where the mesolimbic dopamine system is. And they said, well, let's see if the rat would forego food in favor of electrical stimulation. And so they starved the rat for 24 hours. And in case you're wondering what 24 hours feels to a rat in human equivalents, that's 30 days. So if you starve for 30 days and you're put in a tunnel and at the end of the tunnel is food, the rat has an electrode in it. And when it comes onto the green grid, it prefers to stay at the green grid and get electrically shocked rather than go and fetch the food despite being hungry for about 24 hours. Now they said, would the rat tolerate torture to get this electrical stimulation? And what they found is that they designed an experiment in which there would be an electrical grid out here and this grid would shock the rat's feet. It would be extremely painful. And at either end of the cage was levers that it could press. And once it presses lever, this lever would no longer be active. And it would have to press the other lever to get the electrical jolt and the dopamine increase. And what they found is that the rat ran willingly back and forth until its feet were so charred that it couldn't do it anymore. And Old said that the only reason that the rat would do this is because this is providing the rat with pleasure and bliss. So this was not unnoticed by Dr. Robert Heath. He was a psychiatrist at Tulane. Uh, some people call him a maverick, others call him a monster, but he decided that he's going to try this in humans and he put electrodes deep into the human brain in several of his patients. And he said that by doing this, based on his experience, that he can treat depression, schizophrenia, psychosis, and other disorders. And the placement of his electrode was very similar to that of Olds and Milner. It was deep in the brain where the mesolimbic dopamine neurons are. Now, Dr. Heath's patients behave pretty much like Olds and Milner's rats. When given the opportunity to shock, they had a little self-stimulator, they shocked up to 40 times per minute. The, invest the investigators reported that the patients appeared to like the shocks. They preferred it over food even when they were hungry. And the dominant psychiatric paradigm at that time was of behaviorism. Behaviorism means that anything that the person does is objective, is real, subjective feelings that like thoughts and feelings were unimportant. And of course, even at that time, these studies were controversial. There was one patient, however, with narcolepsy in whom these subjective feelings were recorded, and he said that he felt it more like anxiety and stress, that the act of self-stimulating was intensely frustrating. And even though he was pressing the lever constantly and frantically, he never really achieved the satisfaction that he thought he would get with the next shock. So he described it as a compulsion rather than happiness, pleasure, or bliss. 
So the question that I ask myself is that with the stimulation of dopamine neurons, is it pleasure or bliss, or is it simply the promise of reward, and the next shock is going to give you, or give you the perception of elusive bliss, which you would never completely achieve?